bless you. We want to talk today in the book of Psalm, the 91st chapter of Psalm. The 91st Psalm told us about the secret place of the Most High. He said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. He said, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I will trust. He further says, surely, O oh Lord, he will deliver thee from the snares of the fowlers and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with the feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and your buckler one more verse thou shall not be afraid thou shall not be afraid of the terror that comes by night terrifying at night nor the arrow that flied in the day psalm 91 is a psalm that we really uh don't understand that the book of psalm is not all written by David. The book of Psalm is written by many different authors and we get the gist of the author of the book of Psalm from uh, either the beginning of it, you know, when they say this is the Psalm of so, 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 and so, or through the context of what he's talking about. And there are some psalms that the writer or the author of the psalm is not well pronounced or well known to us when we go and look at the psalm. However, when we continue to read the context, we will be able to tell who the writer of the book of psalm of that particular book of psalm. Well, a psalm is really a hymn that is sung in the temple and some of it we know is pointing to a certain phase of life during the pilgrimage of the children of Israel. Psalm 91 happened to be that psalm that looked like the author is uncertain but I got some gist, I got some, I got some nuggets inside this book of Psalm of 91st uh, chapter to be able to extract who the author could have been. You know, uh, the, the, this book use a metaphoric explanation of who God is because it talked about he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He talk about dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. And one of the things I have chased for a long time is the secret of the secret place. What is the secret of the secret place? What makes the secret place secret? And today we will try to get uh, an understanding of the secret of this secret plea. You know, the, 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 the way God tried to explain some of this secret to us is by using words which are metaphoric. The metaphoric words, uh, you know, when, when the Bible told us in the book of John that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. It does not mean that Jesus rolled himself up and become a loaf of bread. But it's a metaphoric phrase that explains to us that God is a sustenance. A sustenance means he's a bread of life. He reveals God to us in the level that we can understand God. Uh, you see, when God said he is a shelter, he revealed another part of God to us that you can find security in him. But you never needed a shelter if you don't, if there is no storm. 
So for us to realize that God is a shelter, we have to understand that for us to know that God is a shelter, there's got to be a storm, an attack, an attack, an exterior element that are very dangerous to us. That is the only way you can need a shelter. A shelter is to protect us from an attack from God. So where is this secret place? The secret place is not necessarily a location. Otherwise, we will not be able to find secret place in this past two, three weeks that the location of the church has been taken away from us. So if, if there is a secret place, certainly it's not a location. And the enemy thought if it takes the location away and they tell us we cannot meet in a location, then we have been re removed or taken away from the secret place of the most high but the secret place is not a location you see it is a is a is a place in the spirit a place in the spirit where storms headaches hearties cannot follow you you see if you come to 4170 riverdale headache can still follow you Heartache can still follow you. But if you enter into the secret place of the Most High, there is no headache. There is no heartache that can follow you. You can come to church and never even enter into the secret place. You can have service and shout and never enter into the secret place. But when you enter into the secret place, you can be alone in your own house and it looks like you are in the midst of 5,000 people because the secret place is in the spirit. It is in the spirit. There is the enemy wants you uh, to give up. Uh, the enemy wants you to throw in the tower. But you will always have your trust in God because when you trust God, you are showing something that the enemy himself cannot understand. So the summary of this, of this uh, 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 Psalm 91 is that there is a key biblical truth to live by when the world is facing pandemic there is a key place there is a key principle that we can live by when the uh, pandemic is all over the world living by the truth in this message today will enable you to enjoy God's peace with those in the enjoy God's peace with those around you it will also allow you to enjoy God's presence why those people in the world are panicking you can be in Egypt but if your secret place is Goshen then while everybody in Egypt is panicking you have Goshen to live to live in peace. The Bible is the foundation and the fundamental truth uh, to to all of us upon during the affliction of this problem. The Bible is our book and our foundation during the crisis. The word of God declares. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He who dwells in the secret place shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let's, let us look, let us first look 
at the most frightening word in this passage. Let us, the most frightening word in this passage is the word pestilence or the word virus is the word pestilence. The Hebrew word for the pestilence is the air. It means dreadful disease, an epidemic or pandemic. It means an occurrence of sickness that can cause a lot of death. So in Psalm 91, it talks about the word pestilence or the word virus or the word uh, uh, pandemic or a certain sickness or a certain illness that can cause death. All throughout history, from biblical times uh, to this day, we know that there have been diseases which, the, which has what we call negative effect on, on people. All through history, we know that there are epidemics and they will come and they will go. Coronavirus is not going to be the, the only and the last epidemic. There will be epidemic and that will come and we keep on going until Christ return. There will be diseases which will disrupt daily life and lead to destruction of many lives. This cannot be avoided. What determines your peace and your eternal destination is the faith, is the faith you live out before the God of heaven and earth. Your personal relationship with Jesus Christ and your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, that is the cord that we determine your peace. Let's look at what I call a personal God that is able. At this time of epidemic or pandemic, we don't want to just depend on a global God. Let's look at a personal God. Let's look at how we can find peace amidst pestilence by understanding God is not just God, but a personal deity. God is not just over everything, but a personal deity. Uh, there are four names that the Old Testament gave us that refer in that that come out of Psalm 91 that refer to God's name. So we want to make Psalm 91 a personal psalm, and we want to see what a personal God can do. Unlike today, in an ancient times, a person a person's name was more than just a likable label. Today we give people name because we just like the way the name sound. We just, oh, the name Arturo sound right and it sound rhyming with the last name. But in Old Testament, the name is not just because of what it sound like. In, uh, in the key text, there are four descriptions of God which are worth grasping into. And I want us to look at this for description of God. In the case that it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The first word is Most High. The Most High is in Hebrew or is, is, a, is a code name for Jehovah Elion. He cannot be compared to anyone. He is above all things. He owns all things and is a ruler of everything. He that dwelleth in the secret place of Jehovah Elion. I want you to see what you got. I want you to see you are not just living in a place. You are not just living in an address. You are not just living in a location. But you are dwelling in the secret place of Jehovah Elion. 
Now you have to understand the Lord has put us under his cameras. We are under surveillance. When you are under surveillance, God from heaven has a laser beam that surrounds you. So it's a he that dwelleth in this surrounding by the laser beam that God, Elion, the God Almighty himself has formed. He that dwelleth in that secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Everybody shout number two. The first one is God Elion. The second one is Almighty. Almighty means Jehovah Shaddai. <laughs> Jehovah Shaddai. I, 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 I want to just lay emphasis on this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty shall abide under Jehovah Shaddai. Jehovah Shaddai means God is aware or is all powerful, is all sufficient, is all sovereign. That is, before Corona was born, God knew Corona was coming. Before Corona was created, God knew Corona will be created. The elements that they used to make Corona was created by God. God is the creator of the ingredients of Corona. So Jehovah El Shaddai, he give us the awareness of God being all powerful. All powerful. You have to understand now that there is no power on earth that is bigger than the power of God. Nuclear weapon is no bigger than the power of God. You see, we thought nuclear weapon, we thought missiles, we thought gun were the most powerful. They have never fired a nuclear weapon. They have never fired a missile that disrupted the whole world. So now, at a minute state, I want you to get this. At a minute state, we saw a power that is greater than the missile, than the bomb. We saw a power that is not loaded on a plane. We saw a power that is not put in a machine gun. We saw a power that is not launched like a bomb, but is greater than the power of the bomb. It's greater than the power of the missiles. It's greater than the power of the aircraft so as we see this power of the virus is greater than the power of our weaponry for battle so also is the power of El Shaddai greater than the power Aramakashata is greater oh my god you better be careful and don't mess with me because heaven is on loose, on chain. A corona that is bigger than corona. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadows of the almighty. I'm under surveillance. I'm under the shadow. I'm under the power of God. And no devil in hell, no corona from China no dog no cat nothing can touch this one the devil can touch this one corona can touch this one because I'm under a power you can put on the mask you can put on the glove but I'm under the glove of the almighty I'm under the surveillance of the Almighty. I'm under the power of the Almighty. Somebody shout glory. Asia shout glory. Africa shout glory. Nigeria shout glory. United Kingdom shout glory. London shout glory. Heathrow shout glory. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He went on further to say, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. 
Everybody shall refuge. I am under surveillance. He is my refuge. He is my refuge. The word refuge is really pointing to the name of Jehovah that we call Yahweh. The word refuge is pointing to the name that we call Rav Yahweh. It reveals God's nature in the highest and fullest sense. Oh, yeah, didn't you get it? <laughs> the, he's, he's stressing the absolute faithfulness of his will to fulfill his promise. Ha! Ah, when he revealed himself to Abraham, who was a pagan, he revealed himself to Moses. He revealed himself as Jehovah Yahweh. As a matter of fact, the Hebrew are very careful. They cannot call that name because to them it is a mysterious tetragram. It is a mysterious tetragram with a preposition that supposed upon itself. This mysterious tetragram is loaded with the full nature in the highest level and the fullest sense of God's absolute faithfulness to fulfill his promise. This is it. This is where the robber meets the road. This is the cross of God. He is our refuge. He is our refuge. Our refuge. Our, his absolute faithfulness. The refuge. Yahweh is, is absolute faithfulness. His absolute arrogant abandonment of himself to fulfill what he promised. He revealed that heaven and earth can pass away, but what he promised shall never pass away. I am Jehovah Yahweh. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my Yahweh. <laughs> He is my Yahweh. Whenever you look at Corona and say, the Lord is my Yahweh. That is God come loaded. He come loaded with everything that make him God. And he come loaded that when I put my circle around this, can nobody touch it. When I put my hands around this, can nobody touch it because I am Yahweh. I am the one that surround. I am the one that covers. I am Yahweh. All right, the Psalm 91 revealed the Yahweh of God to us. He went on to also tell us that the Lord is his fortress. <laughs> that the Lord is his fortress. Fortress reveals intensity. That is what we call Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Elohim. It is the intensity of his, of his power to preserve and to prepare us for anything that is coming. That is the intensity of his power to prepare and to prepare us for what is coming. So God is the one to look unto. To look onto when living through an epidemic or pandemic become absolutely heavy because he rules over all. He is the only true God who is above all, having the power to control and guide all the government decision that they need to make as well as implementing these plans which have been set in place before the foundation of the earth. Do you think any of this take God by surprise? Do you think God is out of ventilators in his stockpile? Do you think God does not have a, a nose guard? No, your rubber glove is not as good as God's rubber glove. So none of these take God by surprise. God is all sufficient. 
is able to provide everything needed for the treatment and the prevention. He is able to strengthen the caregivers and also heal the afflicted. So we are looking at three sets of people. We are looking at the afflicted, we are looking at the caregiver, and we are looking at those of us who will never catch it. And the law say, all three are under my surveillance. Under my surveillance, I have provided immunity for those of you, or those of us who won't catch it. I have provided healing for those who are afflicted, and I have provided coverage for those who are the caregiver. God, Jehovah, is intense. He's intense when he come to do what his promises are. He's able to give wisdom to the medical field to come up with an agent to heal or a virus. Little did we know until it was revealed that we are looking for a medication while we already have it on our counter. We are looking for medication that has already been produced. He's able to give wisdom to the medical field He's able to give boot, boosting to the businesses affected and to all whose life have been disrupted. He is able to replace everything that the canker worm, the bama worm, and the locusts have destroyed. So don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe in him also. For in my father's house, there are what? Many mansions. He promised wisdom. He promised to make it happen. He said, if you ask me, I will give it to you. James 1 and 5 told us that he will give wisdom. He said, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And God will give it to all men. How? Liberally. He give it liberally, unbraiding, and it shall be given unto you. So trust in the God who give his wisdom liberally because he is self sufficient he is self-sufficient so he can prepare his church to minister to those of you who have needs while resting on all the promises of god he he promises us and he can give his church uh, the way to minister to you during these moments he does not just watch from heaven but is omniscient, present, even if the world cannot detect him. He is not just sitting on his throne. I had somebody on Facebook say, God, where are you? When this thing is planned in Wuhan. God, where are you? When this thing is planted or di di dispersed in New York. God, where are you? But the Lord say, he is not removed or divorce from what affects us. For God is not unrighteous to distract himself from what affects us. But he who make the head, he who make the leg, will make sure the leg works and the eyes see. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 15 and 3, that the eyes of the Lord are where everywhere, keeping watch on the wicked and the good, the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. He's keeping watch on the wicked and the good. Psalm 139 tells us, where shall I go from your spirit? <laughs> where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, the psalmist say, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, what did the psalmist say? He said, the Lord is also there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light above be night, even the darkness, even the darkness 
is not dark to your eyes and the night is bright as the day your darkness is a, a light unto you God is so complete that darkness doesn't hide us God is so complete that night doesn't hide us from us this is the secret of the secret <laughs> this is the secret of the secret because God's surveillance camera camera has night vision it sees in the dark or oh, it also has aqua vision do you know how the navy stay underwater for two weeks and know exactly where they are coming out at do you know how the submarine get under the ocean and showed up in japan and you never see them on top of the ocean do you know when the plane take off in memphis airport and can land on a needle point in new york because there is a secret of a secret. There is a satellite. Watch this now. There is a satellite on top of the planet Earth that every plane, every submarine, every ship, every cell phone, that's how we, how we can find out where you are. Every cell phone is hooked up to that satellite. And the satellite, like a compass, can tell where you are at a certain time. Now, if a man can put a satellite in the orbit, if a man can locate where the plane is to land, how much more is the God of universe? How much more? is the glory of the God of universe who created the satellite. I hear the Lord say, my satellite is looking at your satellite. I control what your satellite sees. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. I'm here to let you know that unbelief, listen to this, this is heavy unbelief and spiritual coldness cannot keep God from working in the midst of mankind I don't care people say the reason for this is because the church has gone cold unbelief and spiritual coldness cannot keep God from working in the midst of mankind even if there's not a single one that believe for the Bible told us in Acts 17 and 27 he said in him we live in him we move and in him we have our being that is when the virus was going to get up from Rwanda, China the virus was in him when it was launched out of China the virus was in him. When he landed in the United States, the virus was in him. In him we live. In him we move. In him we have our being. And the Lord Raider has guided the virus and said, virus, I got some people under surveillance. I got some churches under surveillance. I got my children under surveillance. Hitherto thou shalt come no further. The Lord has drawn a line in the sand. The Lord has drawn a mark in the territory. And told virus, you, virus, you can come no further. Finally, I want to do, deal with dwelling in God's shelter. Dwelling in God's shelter, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Dwelling in God's shelter. Our spiritual condition must be in good order if we wish to enjoy resting in God's peace through 
this epidemic or pandemic, our spiritual condition must be in line. We cannot live any kind of way and expect that we will be under this surveillance. Because the scripture says, he that dwell in the shelter or he that dwell in the secret place or he that dwell in the surveillance he that dwell in the surveillance of the most high the child of god who has his mind in the lord's will who consider how the lord feel about his life will it will be the one that enjoy God's guidance, protection, and enablement. Only those who are concerned about doing the will of God, who consider how the Lord feels about their life, these are the only one. This is the secret of the secret. Only the one that knows that these things that God has prohibited is prohibited for them. These are the ones that enjoy the secret place of God. But if we dwell in shelters of the Lord, if we dwell in the shelter of the Lord, and we dwell at home where God makes his will known, then we must return. We must not return to the world's view or worse will and the lies of the devil should not intrigue us to live outside the confines of the will of God. We must be protracted towards living within the confines of God's will and God's purpose. We must acquaint ourselves to the call of God that is set before us and make it a heartfelt walk over every time the Lord places us as steward over his purpose. We must acquaint ourselves. We do not only have admittance, watch this, not only are we admitted into the secret place of God, this is very key. This is very important. We do not only have admittance into the secret place of God, but we have residency. There's a difference between being admitted into the secret place of God or having residency. We live under God's provision and protection. We live resting and enjoy his refuge forever. Jehovah Elion. We are not just in a hotel that we have to check out at a certain time. We are not just in a rest house that our time expire. But our admittance is not a temporary admittance. Our admittance is a residency. We live here. We are, and let me de deal with dwelling. Everybody shall dwell in. Let me de deal with dwelling with the Lord or dwelling with the Lord. And I want to take this from something that we are all familiar with. I want to take this from the perspective of marriage couple. I want to take it from the marriage couple. Marriage couple make their lifestyle to be aware of one another. To be aware of each other's desire. To know what each couple need. Who enjoy, uh, uh, who enjoy certain things and who likes to do certain things. You know, marriage couple learn each other by studying and become a student of each other. And learn what make each other happy. I know how to make my wife happy. Each couple must know each other response in life circumstance. If you are married to somebody, you have to know how they respond in life circumstance. You have to know, uh, 
uh, you have to be aware of each other's doing, producing confidence in each other. That this is how God study you. The only way you can dwell in God is because God has studied your likes and your dislike. If you like a soft pillow, God made up your bed with soft pillow. So those of you who like hard pillow, God made up your bed with hard pillow. You, you like cold water, God made your dining room ready with cold water. God is so particular. He is so particular that he allow our fingernails to grow so we can scratch our itches. He is so particular in what he does. So, the, you know, the marriage covenant is that comparison of our relationship with Jesus Christ, with the body of Christ being the bride. Just as we have marriage covenant, so also are we, we are married to Christ. And I read something yesterday that really touched me and drive me to this scripture. The fact, the Bible said that when Jesus died and he rose from dead, listen to this, the Bible said he rose bodily. Oh, y'all didn't catch it. He rose bodily. That is, Jesus did not come with another body. He came with his body. Oh no, you didn't get it. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. So when he rose, he rose bodily. His resurrection is the resurrection of the church. Hallelujah. His resurrection is my resurrection. You see, the closer a person gets to God, the closer the person walks in obedience. If you are closer to God, obedience just become a normal thing. My wife does not have to obey me not to cook spaghetti for me. It's not an obedience. It's just a normal walk. So also it is when we dwell in the secret place of God. When we dwell there, the things of God, the obedience to the law of God, the, the, the things that we do not just become regular. It is no more stressful. It is no more stressful not to lie. It is no more stressful not to cheat. It is no more stressful to go to church. You know, he said, don't forsake the assembly of one another together. It's not a stress for me to go to church. It's not a stress for me to give bountifully out of my out of myself because when you dwell you study and you delight in providing what you know that your mate likes you delight in do that so let's let's dig further everybody shall dig further we are still digging on dwelling with the lord let's look at the word dwell the word dwell in hebrew is yasa Y-A-S-A. -A. It means to sit. <laughs> it means to inhabit. It means to stay. When you dwell, you didn't just pass by. You sit. You relax. You inhabit. You stay. So the Bible says many, you know, many approach their relationship with the Lord like many approach their religion many approach religion by just barely making it to church occasionally oh it's wednesday night i gotta go to church and i got a movie coming in coming on at eight o'clock i'm gonna miss it you know you are not dwelling but because if you dwell you will be like david how good and how precious I was glad when they say unto me let us go into the house of the Lord so when you dwell we don't approach ministry we don't approach 
uh, uh, families, we don't approach God as a stream. But through stewardship, we seek to be in the presence of the Lord. There is a, a, a yearning, there is a longing in our spirit to be in the presence of the Lord. Dwelling means to have fellowship with him so that we can oversee those life blessings through his enablement. When you have fellowship with him, then all the giftings that he has given you through his enablement, you will have the opportunity to oversee them. Let's look at first, uh, Second Peter. Second Peter, the first chapter and the third verse says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who call us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us his very great and precious promise so that through them you participate in his divine nature. Dwelling with God allow us to enjoy his attribute as our refuge. It allow God to be able to shield on us. It enable us to enjoy his surveillance. The word refuge is the Hebrew word masay. M-A-S-E-H. Masay. That that indicate a place of safety and a place of protection. So, because we dwell with God, not only do we have his protection, but we also have his safety. We also enjoy his fortress. Fortress or miham. Fortress means his stronghold. Now, you, you have to understand fortress. You have to understand a stronghold. Uh, uh, there's a scripture in the book of Isaiah that says when the enemy comes as a flood, the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard. When the enemy comes like or as a flood, the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against it. We really have not studied the Hebrew version of this scripture. Because this scripture is talking about fortress. But you have to understand that there are protective fortress and there are offensive fortress. Watch this. In Hebrew, there are no commas or periods. And in the original Hebrew, this is how the scripture is written. Watch this. The scripture did not say, when the enemy comes as a flood, comma, the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against it. That's not how it is written. The Hebrew is written like this. When the enemy comes as a flood, the spirit of the Lord lift up. It is what the spirit of the Lord lift up against it. That is the standard of a fortress. No, the enemy is not coming as a flood. That's not what he's saying. The enemy is not coming as a flood. But when the enemy comes... Like a flood, the standard of the spirit of the Lord is lifted up to combat what the enemy has brought. Come on, let's give God a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the Holy Spirit illumination of knowing uh, God as our refuge and our fortress move us to be loyal to him. Because the Holy Spirit illuminates this in our heart. It makes us loyal to him. Because loyalty is our foundation. 
is the foundation of Christian seeing our calling through the healthy completion. Our calling to a healthy completion. Only when Christian knowing God's refuge and him being a fortress will then be able to avoid fears. Like most people in the world, they are afraid of the pandemic. But if you know God's fortress and his surveillance of, of you, then that develop into your loyalty to him because that gives you confidence in God. For the present presence does not cause us to fear nor panic we pray for direction we pray for open doors of opportunity and his will will be done and i just received a prophetic word from the lord that the lord wants me to release on the airway that this pandemic that intends to bring fear that intends to bring destruction will open the door of opportunity for you in the name of jesus when this is all over a giant door of opportunity will be open for you and a business you've never known a finance you've never seen money that you has never hit your bank account is coming to be hit your bank account a door of prosperity a door of ministry another avenue of ministry is coming to you because the lord is your surveillance beloved because the lord is your fortress because the lord is your power hallelujah thank you for watching i'm sure you were richly blessed by this message for more life-changing messages from bishop wesley arije visit us on social media To know more about Pavilion of Hope, please visit our website at www.pavilionofhope.net or join us as a special guest for our transformation service every Sunday at any of our locations closest to you. Pavilion of Hope, where faith is renewed and hope is restored.